Welcome everyone to the next edition of Nebinar, the new European Bauhaus uh, ACE initiative for uh, students and young architects. Today, our, uh, our guest will be Kristina Sareva from uh, Croatia, uh, Marco Mayo from Czech Republic uh, and Portugal, uh, Jacek Friedrich from Poland, uh, and uh, the meeting will be hosted by Boris Charakchev, a member of ACE uh, board uh, team. So, Boris, the floor is, uh, the floor is yours, and uh, let's start. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Václav, as usual. Well, um, my name is Boris Charakchev. As it was told, I, I'm a member of the um, Architecture Council of Europe uh, uh, Executive Board, responsible for Area Three. Uh, but now we 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 start a, a new edition. It was already started with a, a interview with uh, Ruth Schagemann, president of ACE, and uh, Regina Gauthier, president of UIA. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, please believe me, the time you dedicate for this meeting won't be wasted as well. So uh, uh, our guests were already presented. Um, so we start with uh, the lady, without any gender privileges, of course. And um, Kristina Tsareva. Uh, hello, Kristina. Kristina uh, is a scientist um, and comes from Zagreb, and uh, that's the capital of Croatia, for those who, do, who doesn't know. And uh, she's not only an architect, but she also finished uh, the music school, so that uh, <laughs> makes it, you more um, educated as well, because I don't know anything about the notes, although all my family are musicians. Well, she holds um, the PhD from the Zagreb University and up from 2021, uh, she's an associated professor. Um, her doctor thesis uh, was an uh, architectural model of space for interdisciplinary research in uh, art and technology. And she's very involved in promoting architecture to children for which she uh, was very she had some rewards. Um, she participated uh, in a successfully, of course, in a, a lot of uh, competitions, and uh, she's an um, active member of several professional associations and NGOs as well. Kristina, ja sam i nešto propustio, i želiš mi to dodat? Mislim da je i ovo dovoljno. Thank you very much. I think this was quite uh, enough. Thank you very much. Uh, Christina, uh, before we start, I would like to ask you, uh, right now in 2024, it will be 11 years that Croatia is in the European Union as a member. And does it have any impact to uh, Croatian architecture? Well, for sure it has, but somehow when you are uh, waiting for a long time to join something and then finally you do you have really high expectations that everything will change and of course it's not uh, doing that so uh, i would say that we are going in small steps in the right direction well i really believe that croatia was always part of europe as poland as well as czech as well as Slovakia, and many countries so it was uh, pretty easy for you also to um, to reach the European standards, which I really appreciate and congratulations for that. And uh, Christina, we will talk, you will talk about the participation today. And uh, um, from my experience from the interview with uh, Ruth Schagemann and Regina Gauthier, uh, they stated that the, uh, uh, the New European Bauhaus have been oh the, the the tools we use in New European Bauhaus like participation as well were always uh, um, present in the architect's work, but I think that uh, and I I would like to know your European that uh, the, uh, your your opinion that uh, uh, public participation is a particularly strength during this promotion of New European Bauhaus in last years and especially you not know, maybe that we don't name it new european bauhaus but the public participation is a part of our work as an architect isn't it 
Yeah, I totally agree. I think that we always need new packages for some old skills or, or new way of seeing something, then maybe we understand it better. Uh, but of course, that uh, participation was really strong in some points uh, of the history. And uh, somehow the problem is that uh, we are not very eager to do it nowadays or maybe 20 years ago. So a lot of this uh, drive to make participatory more um, involved in uh, um, architecture and ur urban planning work is has has been present for for really maybe two decades or so and i think that new european bauhaus also fosters this this notion alongside with something some other uh, important uh, topics but participatory uh, engagement of public is definitely one of the core ones i i, I think the new european, european uh, bauhaus headlines the the human needs, which is very important in nowadays, where we are living right now with the, all these problems of the 21st century, and that's uh, energy uh, efficiency, climate change, and, and in fact, what we are very sorry, also the wars, and you were one of the of the example of that, and you know what disaster it is. Uh, Christina, uh, what... Can I just the... add something to your thoughts yeah. now? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. The thing is that I really agree with you that it's human oriented component is much more important nowadays than this, uh, which was present before as architects are the educators, they know, and you will live according to, to what they tell you how to live. And now it's really, really open to, to the, the direction that um, we are not that smart to know how to solve everything. Sometimes we don't even know what the problem is. So that's why we need to have this participatory material to work with. That's so. fantastic what you've told, because uh, I always headline that architecture is a long, lifelong learning, not long life, lifelong learning profession, but also we become uh, educators in 21st century. That's very important. Christina, what's a uh, What's uh, what you will tell us uh, today? The floor is yours, and please go on with your presentation. Thank you. I will try to be brief, but it's always hard for me to to do it uh, briefly in this virtual environment. So bear with me. I will try to share the screen, and to make it a full screen, is it? Oh, sorry. Is it working? Yes, fantastic. Okay, thank you. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity to talk about the topic of participation in architecture, design, and integrative planning. This is a topic that my colleague René Lisets and I have been dealing with for the past, past 15 years. At the time we were, we were started, we were both a research fellows at a digital design unit at the Faculty of Architecture here in Zagreb, where today we are associate professors. And it started as a volunteer initiative that we called City Acupuncture or, or in Croatian Acupunctura Grad. We got the idea for this initiative by thinking about how to improve public spaces in the city of Zagreb, especially those public spaces that are anonymous or even unpleasant and are therefore used less or maybe not used at all. It seemed to us that in the overlapping of the two essential structures of the city, namely the physical, the built one, and the social and the human one, illogical issues sometimes arise. Let's call them neuralgic points of the city. We thought about how to approach this problem practically, and we developed the city acupuncture methodology, which essentially consists of three principles. So the first principle speaks of the importance of active involvement of all those who use public space in the process of deciding how the space will be shaped, namely participation. The second is based on the fact that public space is a complex structure that should be viewed through the lens of different disciplines, that means interdisciplinarity. And the third principle, which is directly visible in the name of the initiative, follows the thinking that small and precise interventions at specific points of the city can significantly improve the functioning of large city spaces. 
With the support of colleagues from the Digital Design Unit, we implemented the initiative within the youth section of the Zagreb Society of Architects through workshops. As our actions were voluntary, they mostly remain on proposed solutions because there were not or were uh, very few funds for implementations sufficient for, for example, painting actions. But older colleagues from the Zagreb Society of Architects that had successful experiences and knowledge in applying for EU funding suggested and helped us applying the initiative for financing. As a result, we were approved the funds, funds for the city acupuncture project in which Zagreb Society of Architects was the leading partner. And in addition to it, NGOs from neighboring countries also participated. The idea of the project was to add to the three basic principles of city acupuncture, dialogue between different cultures consists that share, uh, uh, sorry, different cultural contexts that share the same urban development system from the recent past. The two-year project was intense. We held multi-day workshops in each of the five partner cities, young professionals and students of architecture, urban planning, landscape architecture, arts, economics, and many other professions participated in them. Guest lectures from various EU countries well, were also invited, and citizens participated in the analysis of the location, which was the topic of the workshop with whom we got interesting insights, sometimes about spatial problems of the neighborhood and sometimes about something completely different. Workshop participants came up with proposals by working in groups under the guidance of supervisors. And at the end, the solutions were presented to the jury and citizens and the most successful proposals were chosen for implementation. I will present two of these realizations. The realization called In Out uh, dealt with the pedestrian entrance to the settlement through an underpass below one of the city's main roads. The idea was to paint the neglected and unpleasant space in yellow to decorate it and make it brighter at the same time. While we were painting the walls, we heard all kinds of comments from passers-by, from the question of which political party we belong, to the comments about the choice of color, to the comments that we are working in vain because tomorrow someone will destroy the walls again with inscriptions. Thinking about everything we heard, we decided to write the inscription Neighborhood Speaks on the ceiling. That means this kvart govori that you can see on the picture. We wanted to warn all those who will write on the walls that they are talking about themselves and their neighborhood in this way. The first sign appeared in a couple of days followed the neighborhood speech and wrote that the neighborhood hated the owner of the local football club. We didn't know how to react, should we repaint it or leave it because the neighborhood said it. After a few days, someone, not us, removed the inscription by painting it with the same shade of yellow. For some time, nothing happened, but then someone in the middle of the underpass made a sketch that alludes to a love affair between a police and the mafia. While we were looking at the new message and thinking about how to react, a father was passing by with a child of kindergarten age who was enthusiastically saying, look at heart. So we asked local graffiti artists from the neighborhood if they would draw the, that heart somehow. The result surprised us. We didn't expect such a figurative representation. But after a few days, we were more surprised by the new intervention that stated the operation was successful, but the patient died. The city municipality repainted the underpass after a few years, and sometimes later, some new design appeared. The development of this realization was very uh, unexpected for us. We learned a lot, primarily that we cannot predict the rea reaction of the citizens. The second example I chose to show you is called Dynamo I Love. It is an intervention that con connects two topics. The insufficiently used potential of the riverbank for recreational purposes and the lack of public lightning in the area. 
The proposed solution consisted of several static aluminium bicycles in different sizes and one street lamp transferred and converted into electricity. It was the first lamp placed on the darkest part of the riverbank. The citizens liked the installation, but uh, were very skeptical about its durability. They believed that illegal metal collectors would saw off the bikes and take them away on the first night. They scared us so much that we even thought that we would take turns standing guard next to the bike so that the installation would be complete at least for the opening. But contrary, contrary to that belief, the bikes were not taken away. Even the local guys repaired the pedals and replaced bicycle seats with, which were worn out after a few years of use. Another good news, was that after some time, the city of Zagreb installed public lightning along that part of the riverbank. In addition to realizations of which we were and remain very proud, a publication was created during the project, which is also available online. It explains the methodological approach of city acupuncture, presents the workshops and realizations created during the project, and it also contains a catalog of small interventions in the urban fabric that were collected in terms of reference examples during the dur duration of the project. After the successfully ended project, the idea of how to apply the city acupuncture methodology to the entire area of the city began to develop in the Zagreb Society of Architects. So the project Zagreb for me was designed and it connects met methods of urban planning, traditionally that operates top down with participatory methods, which arise from bottom up situations. Colleagues from the Department of Urban Planning from the Faculty of Architecture participated in the project alongside with city acupuncture initiative members that consisted not only of architects, but also sociologists and anthropologists. In order to collect opinion, city acupuncture concluded a series of interviews with representatives of city councils, some focus groups with representatives of NGOs, and interviews with residents in frequent city locations. Proposals also came via physical and electronic mail. The result of that process was 719 proposals. A large part of them related to space in the city that needed to be rearranged or renovated, but citizens' opinion also uh, about neglected building and problems of the city as a whole were also collected. Proposals were analyzed, categorized, and evaluated. The first part of the project was successfully implemented. It resulted in a study in which top-down and bottom-up analysis were overlapped. That study presented a series of locations whose arrangement is necessary both from the point of view of the city urban planning and from the point of view of citizens' initiatives. About the whole process, we have published a book and a handbook for students. Unfortunately, the project never entered the second phase due to series of political circumstances. Nevertheless, based on the implemented first phase, the city of Zagreb received the award for Urban City of Good Practice. Our further work on the topic of participation moved in the direction of creating an elective course as part of the graduate study of architecture and urban planning here in Zagreb. After the acceptance procedure, the course entitled Participatory Design of Space was held for the first time in the academic year 2017-2018. The course is designed as a field-based workshop that gives students the opportunity to learn about participatory methods in the design of space. In this way, the user's opinion is included in the knowledge when, funds when creating a conceptual solution for a small scale task in a public space or some other interaction space. Classes are conducted in the form of concentrated group intensive work and the course is open to students from other colleges and universities. So students learn to identify and critically evaluate participatory content to generate the conceptual level of planning, that means the intent, 
to discuss the, this intent with users, to translate it into a viable solution and to participate in realization if possible. I will present the output of one iteration of the elective course participatory design of space. The representatives of the small primary school in the center of Zagreb realized they are lacking adequate wardrobe space and a rest area in the entrance lobby. The first meeting of students with the school space and its users was a focus group organized in the school in which besides students, representatives of groups of employees, means, meaning teachers, technical staff and management staff, were engaged. We try to ensure the atmosphere as relaxed as possible and focus on expressing the problem without giving possible solutions. The second focus group was held on the same day with pupil representatives from the first to the eighth grade. Moderation of these meetings is crucial and we always try to give each speaker his time, encourage the shy ones and limit the over talkative ones. After gaining insight, into the problems and opinions of users. In a joint discussion, the students try to set a common basic concept of how to approach the task. We always try to do that in the space we discuss about, and in this case, we were in the schoolyard. After this joint discussion, students are, are divided in smaller groups or of three to five members and set up a conceptual level of planning or design in such smaller work teams. A few, a few days after the focus group, again at school, this time we are presenting the basic intentions of student groups. The audience of school staff and students consists of more or less the same people who participated in the focus group. In order to get as many answers as possible in a short time and to record them properly, we prepared leaflets for the audience on double-sided A4 paper, on which they could write their observations and comments along with a graphic representation of each of the proposal. After that, we were able to decide together with the school principal which proposed solutions will be further developed, translated into viable solutions and prepared for realizations. It is always interesting to see how users react to the proposed intervention in the space. They're almost always pleasantly surprised by the amount of ideas that students make in a short amount of time. And sometimes they themselves become creative and are eager to add their own ideas. Students, on the other hand, often meet the opinion of investors for the first time in their education. Positive comments are always welcome, but negative opinions are not always pleasant and expected, especially if a child tells you honestly what he thinks. We were lucky that the school raised small funds in advance for the realization. Also, the school community is quite strong, so a lot of people participated in realizations. In 2019, this work action uh, that they uh, conducted was refurbishment of the school lobby according to the students' ideas. Students, primarily those whose solutions were selected, actively participated in the realization. For many of them, this was the first time they needed to turn their own ideas into detailed designs and prepare them for realization. Of course, there were mistakes, but the experience was great. So the results, a wardrobe space has been designed and constructed so the students can leave coats and school bags while eating in the dining room or playing in the schoolyard. An appealing area under the stairs is transformed in a bright space with tailor-made seating area for parents or for um, young people playing hide and seek. An orga organic shaped desk has been designed and built for students to write homework if they have a break between classes. The shape is, of the table evokes creativity and dynamizes the space. It is also possible to uh, be disassembled into three parts so it can be removed for emptying the entrance space for school manifestations. Finally, it's worth noting that the process presented here lasted about a month from focus groups in school to realizations. In recent years, we have also been dealing with a larger scale. That means inclusive methods in architectural and strategic planning. 
Stakeholders from different sectors, civic, government, academic, and business have various perspectives on what public interest is and how it should be achieved. In complex strategic decision makes, sustainable development goals play an important role as criteria in evaluating certain actions, solution or policy and its benefits to the environment, the social realm or economics. Intensive participatory and interdisciplinary quadruple helix processes are proven to ensure that innovative practice is in line with public interest, sustainable development goals, and most of all, is harmonized between different sector stakeholders. Parallel and intervene with the architectural and planning activities, designing and uh, managing an integrative quadru quadruple helix process is a task by itself with specific challenges to overcome, namely detecting the challenge holder as well as key holders to be fully inclusive but efficient. Involve stakeholders continuously from the beginning, balance involvement dependingly on the, their role importance and provide relevant feedback. Moderate discussions dynamically so participants can equally express opinions and achieve consensus. Process participative data to be relevant for planning. And finally, designing the quadruple helix process individually for each task. I will illustrate our approach to inclusive methods in architectural and strategic planning through the case study uh, of making the master plan for Brdovec. Brdovec is a small rural county near the capital of Zagreb. It is developing quickly into a small satellite city. The need for developing new central public and residential zone was recognized, but to precisely define the need for urban spaces and facilities, as well as specific housing type policies, an integrative master plan for the area was designed on the Faculty of Architecture. Quadruple helix process was designed to target key issues Wide survey among citizens was combined with focused discussions in the county municipality. Developer representatives were also involved in housing topology issues. The inclusive process resulted in precise and diverse program of central facilities and spaces to fit the needs and future identity of the county between urban and rural. Mix of four different housing typologies provide diverse living options to cover that span. Master plan proposed general spatial disposition to be forwarded as a foundation for standard urban planning procedures. After the successful cooperation in creating the master plan, we continued with participatory activities in Brdovec. And at the beginning of this year, we held a focus group as well a presentation to interested citizens of the project for the integration center plan by the master plan. The conceptual project was presented by the author, and in a moderation discussion, the future users commented the planned space and gave their suggestions for the further development of the project. Finally, I would also like to mention the course Collaborative Transsexual Governance that will start in a month or so, which is conducted as part of the Erasmus Mundus Master's program called Redesigning Post-Industrial Cities and whose teachers come from the Faculty of Architecture and the Faculty of Law of the University of Zagreb. The course was designed in collaboration between these two faculties and is conducted interdisciplinary. I hope that with this short chronological review, along with some illustrative examples, I have brought closer the topic we are dealing with through the different modalities in which it develops. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Christina. I will stop sharing the screen. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. It was uh, really very impressive. And you talk about the acupuncture in architecture in municipality, which uh, um, shows that we are using the medical language, which is a medical intervention. And it, um, I think that it comes from the fact that we are responsible for safety and health of society in a meaning more mental and physical 
uh, way. Not only it's, it doesn't go about construction, it, it goes uh, about how do we use the space. And uh, from your speech, I understood very well that uh, uh, we, we generate, we provoke the public activity. But the question is, each of us must answer, it's architect or architecture provokes this activity. But I would like to ask you one, one real question, which is, uh, uh, for me, it's very interesting. You had this um, active contact with uh, uh, people who were not architects. Uh, what language do you use to communicate with them? Do they understand our architectural language or you had to speak more, um, let's say, easy way or more uh, open way? Oh, do, do we have any barrier in communication with the public as an architect? Yeah, each of the profession develops its own understanding of language and, and the same words have different meanings for different professions or maybe some professions don't even use them. For example, maybe concept is a strong word in architecture and sometimes it's not really easy, easily uh, understandable to other professions. So uh, it's very hard to moderate participatory workshops. It's, uh, you really have to have this social component of understanding everybody. Because if you are going to approach them as you are, you don't know anything, I will tell you very, uh, uh, I will explain you everything very, in a very low to speak standard. Extra people, yeah? Yeah, then, then they will be offended. And on the other hand, if you just continue doing your normal architectural language, of course, they will not understand what you are what you want to say. So, um, yeah, it's it's hard, but it's not uh, impossible. And what, what you uh, said before about this acupuncturing um, method, we always like to refer to it as we, we will not do the surgery of the city tissue, we will do the healing in, in some specific points. Because uh, sometimes a surgery must be performed, but it's better to, to see it, it really is there, the problem is there through, through some research before. And that's what we always try to do. So uh, sometimes even very precise, small intervention will heal the, 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 the part of the neighborhood without any problem. And sometimes it will not, then we will need the uh, massive reconstruction or the surgery if you want to put in medical language. Thank you. And that's what uh, uh, Ruth made the message for 2024. Come to the roots and understand the roots, not forget that. That's very impressive. Thank you very much, Christina. Thank you.